Hello everyone. So I'm Patrick, um, the MC of the, this afternoon. So uh, uh, today we will uh, go into to talk about the connected securities. Um, so uh, securities is one of the most important uh, area that we cannot ignore in API architecture. So we are very glad that uh, we had uh, quite a few of uh, speakers. They are talking about different perspective of API security including how to protect the API ecosystem, how to manage the API supply chain, any uh, potential leeway to handle the API security, and even more, why the user uh, authentication is no longer a uh, 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 pure uh, factors that we need to take care. So um, first of all, I am really glad that uh, we would like to introduce our first speakers, Omaru, from, um, uh, the, he is the CEO of uh, Oculus, so um, he will be talking about how to better protect your API ecosystem. So uh, thanks. So um, Omaru, thank you, Patrick. Can you see uh, my uh, Can you see my screen? Uh, not yet. Uh, so okay, this is uh, is this now okay? And your voice is uh, loud and clear. So um, okay. I pass the stage to you. Thanks. Thank you. And did you say you can see my screen? Okay. Yes. Yep. All right. Cool. Thank you for having me and, and thank you for, for the introduction, Patrick. So my name is Omaru Maruatona and I am the CEO of Iculus. Iculus is a cyber AI company. And what we do is we provide API security, visibility and privacy. I'm going to be talking today about protecting the API ecosystem. I've got a set of um, thoughts here that I'm proposing as far as you know, our experience is concerned, um, pushing API sec security to both SMEs and enterprise companies. Um, maybe just to start with a bit of uh, background about myself. Um, I'm a cyber AI consultant. Uh, I've been in the cyber security and AI space for over 10 years. Uh, I've worked for a large mining company in, in Africa, in Botswana. I've also worked for a large Australian bank, um, as well as a, a global share registry technology company, uh, Computer Share. Um, the very last uh, role I had before I started Iculus, I worked at PricewaterhouseCoopers, PwC, as a cybersecurity consultant. A few years into my uh, tenure as, a, as Iculus CEO, I also held a part-time role uh, at one of the large Australian universities as a part-time industry professor. So my thoughts here are based on observations uh, that I've made um, after studying Iculus, having been in the API security space for over four years now. So, you know, when I was asked to speak about protecting the API ecosystem, um, a number of thoughts came to mind and, and, and what I have here is some of the thoughts that I think are most relevant as far as protecting um, the API ecosystem is concerned. Um, the first thing I'll, 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 I'll talk about is the need for a holistic approach to the ecosystem, to the security of the ecosystem. I'll also touch a bit more about layered security, which in some cases is called uh, defense in depth. Um, I'll also talk about the need for um, specific API um, uh, threat intel sharing standards or protocols. I'll also talk about the need for the standards, particularly security standards, to be dynamic because the threat is ever evolving. So to have static standards that don't evolve as the threats evolve, I think, does not help. And then I'll touch on a bit more about the trends that I'm seeing in terms of ecosystem design, ecosystem security uh, in, in Singapore, in the UK, and in Australia. And then finally, the good old question of security versus user experience. We'll talk about that, particularly in the context of um, um, ecosystem security. 
So I looked up what an ecosystem is, and essentially, although the term is very, very much strong in in, in biological systems, um, an ecosystem, you know, if you're looking at it from a computer system perspective, is a network of interconnected systems or services. And essentially, in, 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 in this ecosystem, some services require more than one entity, more than one of these subsystems to complete a transaction. So the key features of this ecosystem is that uh, there's very strong interconnection between entities, between participants in the ecosystem or service providers. Um, for example, to make a payment may require a merchant, um, obviously a service provider, where the, the service is being purchased from, as well as a bank. So there's all these very, very strong um, interconnections between um, these entities. And also a key feature of the API ecosystem is there is an inferred trust system. Uh, this trust is constantly validated via credentials, but you know, the, the inference here is that once the credentials are provided and they're validated and checked, then the service requester is who they, they claim to be. And, and, and typically the service gets rendered based on that, um, on that trust arrangement. So I just thought it would be good to set the context before moving on to you know, the rest of my, uh, my thoughts on, on protecting this ecosystem. I think it's important to understand that the interconnectivity of the, of the component, but also the way the trust system works. So the first, um, uh, uh, I guess the most important, you know, guideline as far as I'm concerned in terms of um, ecosystem security is to, to understand that given that components in an ecosystem, whether you're looking at an open banking ecosystem or any other ecosystem that relies on, on APIs for, for, for communication, the, you know, the, the key thing is that the system rely on each other to provide a service to, to, to their customers. Therefore, if there is a system that does not have security that is up to scratch, you know, in other words, a weak link, um, that particular system can be used by cyber criminals to compromise other systems. So in other words, if there is a weak link, then the exposure spreads to, 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 to other uh, participants in the ecosystem. Um, so therefore, for me, it's very important that when we're talking about you know, the API ecosystem, whatever that security standards or, or, or set of guidelines, they need to be applied or recommended equally across the board. Um, and because the integrity of the whole ecosystem depends on each component being able to individually, you know, repel um, attempts to compromise the system by, by, by uh, fraudulent parties. Um, and also, you know, in the context of, of, of COVID, one of the things that we keep hearing um, is the idea of herd immunity, where whether it's vaccinations, whether it's some kind of immunity, there seems to be a critical mass that you need to reach in order to be, you know, relatively comfortable that the virus will not spread to, to, to others. Unfortunately, with the API ecosystem, there's no such thing where if you have a hundred components, each of those hundred components rely on each other, and then you apply security controls to 60% of them with the assumption that the rest or the whole system will be secure because you have that critical mass um, of security. It, with API um, ecosystems, that does not apply, and which means that you know, the, the hard work of having to have every single entity, every single service, uh, service provider to be sufficiently uh, protected is, is critical. So that's the first part, um, you know, as, as, as far as I'm concerned to that um, 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 API uh, uh, ecosystem security is that holistic approach is very, very critical. The other part is layered security. In some cases, this is known as uh, defense in depth. Uh, most of the ideas, uh, you know, on, on layered security are, are, are 
you know, based on the, the, the old medieval castle security where to get to the crown jewel, you know, um, a, a, a visitor, whether they're malicious or not, has to go through several checkpoints. The idea of going through several checks is such that if there's something that is not right about, about the visitor, you know, if one checkpoint misses it, then the assumption is the other checkpoint should be able to, to, to detect that. In security, the, this idea is, is transposed with the concept of increasing the cost or increasing the, the effort of attack. And essentially, attacking any system involves effort, involves cost to an extent. You know, the tools that some criminals use, uh, some of them are, you know, open source and free, but some of them, you know, you have to pay money. Um, and some involve, you know, some training, some learning to understand how they work. But also each of these systems, you know, uh, will trigger some kind of alerting within the, the organization that is being targeted. So the idea of having several layers um, for a fraud star to, to go through in order to be able to pull off a successful attack reduces the risk of those successful attacks because they would have to compromise control A, control B, or layer one, layer two, layer three, right? Depending on how many of those layers are. So the idea of layered security, as much as it's an old uh, concept, it very, very much applies to, to, um, to um, protecting the API ecosystem. The, 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 the unfortunate part or the disadvantage with such a system is, you know, there will be cost involved to set up the different layers uh, of security controls. There'll also go into be, you know, a compromise between how much security is, is required as well as performance, right? Uh, I mean, if you take an API request as, as something that needs to be validated or checked, you know, several times, the question becomes, can the user afford to wait, you know, 100 milliseconds before whatever service they're asking for is rendered, right? So there's performance there. And to a very large extent, uh, user convenience, which I'll talk about uh, as well um, in, in the end. The other part um, that is very important is the idea of uh, real-time threat sharing. Threat sharing is not a new idea altogether. Um, it's, it's, it's around in other aspects of security. Um, what I'm proposing here is the, the idea of real-time API th threat intel sharing um, is, is such that, you know, I, I, in, in Australia, um, as, as many of you uh, can, 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 can um, appreciate, the idea of, sorry, the, 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 the occurrence of wildfires is something that, you know, has become a bit more severe, a bit more common lately. Um, others are saying it's climate change. Um, others are saying it used to be there, except it was managed better. So as far as history is concerned, the way that the original owners of the original inhabitants of, of the land of Australia used to manage um, um, wildfires is that they would anticipate the time that, or, or, or the season that these wildfires would start. And they would proactively burn off in a controlled manner the area that would typically be burned in a wildfire, such that when it gets really hot and, and the fire is likely to start, you know, that fire has already been burned, you know, you know sorry, the grass and the trees and, and the vegetation has already been burned in a, in a controlled manner. So the idea of that is, you know, in, in a security context, coming back into APIs is that if we apply you know, a, a similar approach to, to an API ecosystem where one party gets attacked um, and then that party, upon the detection of that attack, the threat patterns, the way it was done, are shared to other parties in the ecosystem in such that, you know, if it's a zero day, the spread of it is much, much less. It's mitigated because that threat would only affect one party or two and then the rest are pre-warned such that when the attackers, you know, target those other parties, they've already been pre-warned, 
they understand that this particular pattern points to a threat um, or an attack, right? From a risk management perspective, this is, you know, a proactive approach to deal with um, API-specific threats. Um, and in the end, the impact of that risk is, is, is reduced. Um, but and again, this is not a, 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 a new concept, but relooking it and, and repurposing it in the, in, the, in the context of an API um, ecosystem, I think will help. The other part is, um, you know, having, having standards. I mean, many, many countries have regulators who provide the standards for security, for resilience and, and, and all sorts of, um, you know, system integrity. What I think, what I see is not so um, done, you know, in a, in, in a way that I think keeps up with the threats now is the standards are, are not so dynamic. You know, the standards are, the standards are put out one day and then not updated or changed for another easily 12 months, in some cases more. The, the problem with that approach is we know right now how dynamic cybersecurity is, particularly the threats. So what I'm proposing for, you know, API ecosystem security standards are they need to be easily implementable. Um, I've been privy myself to look at um, some API uh, development standards. I have not seen API security standards yet. But um, they need to be easily implementable such that, you know, a, a security designer could look at a standard and understand exactly how they're going to implement it. Um, they also, in my opinion, needs to be a way to regularly update the standards such that, you know, as new threads are discovered, as new counter threads are being devised, then those can also be um, applied to, to the standards such that the security designers of the different parties within the API ecosystem can update the standards. Um, and then also they need to be product agnostic. Um, obviously with a standard, the idea is the idea is to, 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 to prevent a threat. The idea is to contain a risk, right? Which product gets used for that really is up to, 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 to the company that is implementing that standard. So it's very important to stress the agnosticity, agnosticity of, um, of this um, security standards. And then finally, accessibility, right? Uh, I'm not sure how many developers you, 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 you talk to, but a lot of them in many, many, many cases, when API ecosystem you know, services have been developed, you know, I would argue uh, that developers regularly consult the standards, right? Typically what developers go after is the functionality. You know, if this thing is meant to do A, B, C, D, then you do something that does A, B, C, D. Um, also, with, in terms of the standards, there seems to be a lack of, you know, an automatable tool that can check conformance to the standards, right? So which kind of, defeats the whole purpose of having standards because if you're going to have standards and there's no way of tracking whether a product or a service confirms to those standards then you know they're going to stay you know a source of advisory that is only adopted by companies who have the time and the effort to look at that otherwise you know they largely become unused and and, and to a large extent you know not very useful so some of the key trends um, that I'm seeing in terms of ecosystem design, ecosystem security, um, you know, through my, my, my travels with, with Iculus is in the UK, when they were launching the, um, the UK open banking um, 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 system, you know, I had the opportunity to, to, to be at, at, at that particular launch. And one thing that I saw they did was to have a register. So this register, any company that wanted to be part of open banking, whether you're a service provider, whether you're an integrator, whatever part um, 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 that, you know, your company or your product plays, every single entity had to register in this um, open banking registry. And that was a way of 
trying to force compliance. Um, that was a way of trying to have a list of the participants, which to a large extent covers some of those security um, 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 requirements, right? Know your customer, understand who the ecosystem participants are and things like that. The same sort of approach is, is applied in Australia where they have um, the trusted service, uh, service provider register. The idea is the same. The idea is that nobody can participate in this system unless they're first registered and, and they've undergone you know, all the due diligence that the registry requires. In Singapore, um, I'm not really sure about open banking, but the one thing I've seen which will talk directly towards um, you know, API uh, ecosystem security are the new um, guidelines on, on API security. I thought that was um, you know, something that should be applauded to for the first time to have API specific guidelines on making sure that you know, security monitoring becomes part of you know, the other routine security um, activities that companies do. So that's what I've seen in terms of key trends in, in different countries about ensuring the integrity of, um, of the API ecosystem. And then finally is uh, the, the, the question of uh, security versus experience. Right? The idea of security is to keep uh, data and systems secure, but also in designing for security, you know, particularly in, in, in the context of open banking and a lot of the other more modern uh, API-based ecosystems where, you know, the ecosystem has a very strong uh, retail customer uh, use case. You know, the, the, the open banking um, ecosystem, for example, has both, you know, B2B use cases as well as B2C. And it's primarily designed so that customers can get more choice so that customers can you know, move about service providers easily so that banking data and banking services can be liberalized to, to other third parties. The problem with that is you know, too much security you know, compromises the usability of the system. Uh, too much security affects how users feel uh, the look and feel of, of, of interacting with, with, with such a service. So there is a compromise that needs to be drawn when, when designing security, particularly if it's the kind of security where users are having to, you know, sacrifice some time, sacrifice, you know, some of the, 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 the niceties of using a service in the first place. So what I'm essentially saying there is, you know, as we design security, as we come up with new ways of ensuring that systems are secure, there is you know, a point of limit where you know, we're now eating into the user's comfort because in the end, the systems are for the users. Therefore, you know, I, I think usability should be front of mind when, when, designing, when designing the systems. So that's all I had, um, a very brief notes on, you know, what I've seen, what I think should be done to look at the API security, um, sorry, the, the API ecosystem holistically and say, what are some of the principles in designing the security, not just to keep the data secure and the system secure, but also to ensure that in doing that, users continue to interact with the service in a seamless manner in a way where they feel they're not having to wait um, or, or, or go through too many hoops to, to, to get a service. I'm hoping it's gonna be interactive. I'm sure there's uh, plenty of time for questions and, and I'm keen to, to hear from the audience. Hello, so, okay, can can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hello, Maru. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So thanks for the talk. So um, uh, here he come to some quick questions. So this is an interesting sharing. So let me check the, some of the feedback from the audience. Okay. So you you have shared quite some uh, different perspective, uh, talking about how to protecting the API ecosystem. So maybe can can you share maybe from your experience which one is more important? Maybe maybe the priority because time is limited. How you may suggest people to sort out the the, the what is the most important? Yeah, I'd I'd say the holistic the holistic part where 
You know, we can't just afford to have other entities who are more secure and other entities who are pretty much insecure, right? As I said, as long as there's that, that interconnectivity, you know, a risk can start from, you know, an area of low security and make it up to that area of high security through that inferred trust model, right? So, so I think getting that right first is, is, is a priority. You know, what we're seeing now is companies that can afford to buy security products, get as many as they can, whereas mm -hmm. some startups who are on a very tight budget may not be able to buy everything they need. It does not mean that, you know, the ecosystem is secure. It just means mm -hmm. that, you know, it's, it's a lopsided model, which still leaves the entire ecosystem vulnerable. Mm. Okay, so we also know that uh, your actually uh, your team is also keep uh, working with different company. So, uh, which one you think it may be the most common one that people is uh, having the issue, and maybe what is their common challenge? How to adjust them, etc. Cultural, technical, whatever. Yeah, I'd, I'd say you know balancing security and, and the user experience. Right, the trend now is to use machine learning approaches to 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 mm. beef up. Um, security, to make security adaptive, to make security um, um, a bit more intuitive. The problem with, you know, machine learning approaches is that as you train the models, even when the models are fully operational, there is this thing called, you know, false positives where occasionally a system may misclassify a request as being fraudulent or as being a threat when it's not. When you translate that into a user perspective, I may be using my credit card and then it gets blocked just because I'm using it in a, in a place where I've never visited before, right? Um, I mean, that convenience is, is, is something that businesses are always very, very cautious about, particularly when they're looking to, to roll out a new product. But, you know, I, I think as much as I acknowledge that we need to, to consider the users when, when we, we implement such things. Sometimes, you know, you need to weigh the value of having a capability versus not having it, right? Mm, okay, so um, another common question actually from also from my personal experience is that uh, some company know that, oh, API security is really important, but maybe their team uh, do not have any practical experience or resources to suffer. So um, maybe how can you advise them? Maybe they are just a, like a, a normal staff company. So how, how would you such, uh, advise them to, to start with uh, if they yeah. have a lack of some resources? Yep. Yeah, first thing they should do is call me. I can help. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. look, um, um, seriously, um, uh, that's what I was talking about earlier when I said um, accessibility of standards. You know, there, there is a lot of, documentation on, on API standards, and I think even to an extent some security standards. The problem is, you know, I don't know how useful those those things are, right? You know, API security, particularly for smaller companies, is typically an area where you might just have to invest in an external party to understand exactly what's happening. The other thing we're seeing is we're seeing a lot of SMEs, smaller to, to medium entities use third-party um, APIs. I think that's another area of um, exposure, right? which is why having somebody that, you know, operates in that API security um, sort of domain can help just to understand what's happening. Mm, okay, so I think we still have some 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 uh some time left. So I I I want to share another one, maybe more open discussion because you talk about the the trend, uh maybe mm. in UK, uh, Australia, and Singapore. So they are some of them is doing the register approach, some is the in the guideline approach. So um when we are talk to talk to some of my 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 peer and banks, so if this is talk about register, so they know how they do. That they can do to get through the, the standard. But talking about the guideline, it is more uh, reference, et cetera. So uh, do, do you have any any uh, experience when you are working with uh, some some company, maybe they, they need to go for guideline, but they don't know oh, how, how they should do to uh, to, to, to get their goal or, or their purpose done. So how may you advise uh, those people how to address um, those, this kind of a security compliance uh, issue? This is more on an open uh, comment, yeah. 
Yeah, look, I think just speaking about guidelines, right, the, the MAS um, uh, API security guidelines uh, came out in, in January. So they're still relatively new. We do have a partner, um, uh, a customer of ours in Singapore, who obviously when those came out, we were the most relevant um, service provider to help them understand what it means and how to navigate that. With with the with the MAS guidelines, they're very simple. Uh, they're written in very simple uh, language. It's mostly you know real time monitoring, uh, making sure that there's a dedicated API um, security monitoring tool. Um, and I think it talks um, about you know monitoring authenticated API traffic or authenticated API requests, which means that. The ideal place to, to do that is just before that request is being rendered or being responded to by, by, by the application or the back end. So, you know, it's it's a set of guidelines, obviously not mandatory, uh, but something that businesses used to seriously consider as they roll out their, uh, you know, API service provision platforms or API, you know, digital services. I think it's something that, you know, without you know, selling, uh, we, we, we can help with. Uh, it's something that we do every day. Um, but other than that, the language itself is very simple, uh, simple to read, easy to understand. Mm, okay, got that. So um, we, we, ha we have quite quite some questions. So maybe let me ask uh, maybe one, one or two more. Then we are about we are this one. So um, sure. yeah, so, so uh, someone is also asking, um, okay, talking about uh, security, there's so many things that we need to fulfill. So um, people love loves asking, talking about the best practice. So what do you think about the security best practice? So do you think there's something there or what is your point of view talking about the API's best practice or security best practice? Yeah. Yeah, look, my, my thought on security, whether it's APIs or anything else is it needs to be systematic. It needs to be methodical. Um, Security that begins with a product is there's there's a lot of limitations there. There's a lot of gaps there. So for me, you know, without knowing the details of exactly what part of API security is being inquired about, I would say there needs to be a, a design, a roadmap to say we're going to look at this part first, and then we we'll look at that part, and then we we'll look at that part. It's it's the way that. You know, it's proven to be cost effective. It's a way that is proven to be long term, right? Um, so I would say that without you know knowing the details of exactly what's being talked about is, you know, take it take it to the basics. Start with the basics and then build from there. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Uh yeah, I think this is uh, all, almost the, the question that uh, we got. So uh, maybe do you have any final wordings to, to share to, to our audience, et cetera, so that they can have a, just a last minute takeaway and also maybe leave your contact method for the, our audience? Now, look, I'm, I'm, I'm always happy to engage, um, you know, in the area. It's something that we're, we're passionate about. Um, so I've shared my, my email on the screen uh, in, in, in the PowerPoint deck and I'm keen to 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 engage further with anybody that wants to um to to discuss this topic. Mm, okay. 